everyone. So this is Unit 7, Lesson 2. We're still talking about North America, and this time we're going to be focusing on the environment and society. One of the big themes that we're going to cover in this unit is how people affect our environment. And um, we're also going to talk about how we've altered our environments. We're going to talk about the problems that we humans have created, um, especially with respect to the world's water systems. And we're going to talk about things that have been done or that we are doing to protect the environment and the world around us. And that's going to be an overall theme that you're going to see throughout this unit. The vocabulary for today is aquifer, which we've talked about in Unit 7, Lesson 1. But you see here, aquifer is the water that is stored underground. Okay, so that's, that's what we mean when we say aquifer. And then overfishing, kind of self-explanatory, but it's basically removing fish from an area at a rate faster than the population can replenish or reproduce. So if you see here, all of the fish that are in this net, they're being netted up to... Um, sell for commercial markets and the problem is is that when we take too much fish out of the sea we um, run the risk of damaging the ecosystem and possibly even having an endangered species which is not good for the environment overall it's important to share with you some facts that i kind of thought were pretty interesting so the united states and canada are the developed nations of north america and as, as a whole, the United States and Canada, we really just make up less than 6% of the world's total population, but we consume 30% of the world's energy. Our CO2 emissions are 10% greater per person than Asia's. It's because we're a society of consumers. We consume all things, right? Goods, energy, land, resources. We're going to have to start worrying about conservation, though. If you take a look at this watch here, it's pretty cool. Holographic, it like gives you your own little screen, right? It would be something that I think would be interesting to have. But we're going to be coming up to decisions where we have to figure out whether it's the technology is more important than the earth, right, at a certain point. We're always trying to balance the desire to own all the latest and greatest technology with the need to also use the earth's resources wisely. So we're a country that's afflicted by that balance and preserving that balance. Ever since the European settlers cleared the land in the New World to make room for houses, we started altering the environment of North America. New species of crops were planted that weren't native. Um, soil became, became an issue. Erosion was a problem. And we really transformed a vast wilderness that was utilized by the Native Americans into one of the most advanced and urbanized regions of the entire world. Present day technological advances have made it possible for people to live in former, formerly uninhabitable places. Transportation systems enable people to easily travel from place to place. You can live on a mountaintop now where as maybe 100 or 200 years ago, it was difficult or even impossible to reach those areas. Tunnels and bridges also forge connections between people and places, and that's part of a technological advance too. Modern agriculture allows us to irrigate places like the desert, making life there possible. We might even see settlements starting to come up who knows, in Antarctica with the technology as it increases in the present day. But just like everything in life, there are costs to the development of technology. Logging has depleted forests. Grasslands have been converted to farms, and that causes soil erosion. 
The damming of rivers and movement of water has reduced natural habitats, and that threatens the biodiversity of a place. It's important that we all learn from history. So in the 1900s, the Great Plains became an area known as the breadbasket. The land was cleared and it was really successful there for growing grain and raising livestock. And when the tractor came along, man, that technology really boosted the production of grain in that area. But one of the things was that while this was good for the economy and the farmers in the short term, in the long term, it was really harmful to the environment. Farmers didn't know that they had to protect the soil. And so what ended up happening was poor farming practices, along with a drought from natural causes in the 1930s, led to what was called the Dust Bowl years. And so that was a really hard time for our country given the fact that it was happening right around the Great Depression as well. And many, many people were um, left without a way to support their families. As you can see here, this man is trying to grow something in a sand pit, right? If we don't protect the land, the land won't be available to us to use for the future. That's where all of that sustainability comes in. So it's important that we learn from history and that we don't use the land to the point where we won't be able to have it for future generations. Farming, urbanization, population growth, this has all put a lot of stress on um, our fresh water in this country. And if we look at this map, we can really see that a lot of the heavily populated areas are have a lot of water stress. You look at New Mexico, Arizona, and California, heavily populated states that also are really um, dealing with water shortages in our country. So water isn't distributed evenly. It's not always located where it's needed the most. And so water is pumped out of aquifers, dams are built, and water systems redirect water as needed. But unless these practices are managed properly, this can put a real big strain on our ecosystems and possibly drain the water we have underground that's been there for thousands of years. And once that's gone, we don't know if the aquifer would come back for that groundwater supply. That's a big problem that we face with how water is distributed and where our population exists. Another issue is fresh water is great, but if the quality of the water is poor, it doesn't really do a whole lot for us, right? We have to be aware of protecting our water resources. Farming techniques like those pesticides and herbicides, we don't want those to end up in our water supply. Also wastewater. We wouldn't want to drink this water, right? But yet this water is sometimes going into our fresh water supplies. And so that's not necessarily something that's good for our health, and that can be a really big problem, um, especially when populations grow too fast and there's not enough water to support, or excuse me, sanitation to support um, the amount of people in an area. So water quality and pollution is another really big issue that we face. Like we said in Unit 7, Lesson 1, where fresh water empties out is eventually into the marine environment. And so technology has caused a lot of destruction into the marine environment or ecosystems as well. Overfishing, um, if you look at the salmon population in the Pacific, it's declined as much as 80%. There's issues in the Gulf of Mexico, issues with respect to microorganisms, from pesticides. So we definitely have a whole lot of issues that are affecting our oceans as well, which as we know, oceans connect the world. And so if our oceans are polluted, that causes problems, not just for us here at home, but other places as well. 
one of the key things that I want you to take away is that when humans alter the environment, there's benefits and there's costs to the technology we have. People in our government really need to face the challenge of creating policies that protect the environment and its resources. The goal always is to create a balance between economic development and resource use with environmental protection. Because we in North America, especially the United States, have influence on global economic and political policies, we can be leaders in the world's protection of the environment as a whole, not just in our country, but also beyond. We do have agencies in the United States that help um, face the environmental issues and uphold the government regulations. One of the biggest that I'd like to highlight is the Environmental Protection Agency. In 1970, it was created um, in order to help people interact with the environment in a sustainable way. And so the EPA is really responsible for enforcing all of the national environmental regulations. Um, that's important to note. You will see that again. If you guys are interested in further research, um, these are some really good sites that you might want to check out. The EPA has a site, also waste management, and also the National Organic Program. That's pretty much everything for Unit 7, Lesson 2. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you guys so much um, for taking you know about 25 minutes out of your Monday in order to finish up this um, work in our lessons. And we will start on Lesson 3 and 4 tomorrow. We're moving into Latin America. Adios, amigos.